Hello, it's Chris. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a surprise. I am joined. <laughs> Is that much of a surprise? Wait, should I go off the screen? Okay, say it. I have a surprise. I am joined by my boyfriend, Benji. Benji. Yeah, okay, so this is my first time appearing on Chris's channel. Hello, my name is Benji. I have my own channel um, where I do stuff with like plants and interior design stuff. And we are doing a challenge today. A book, book swap challenge. So recently I saw a YouTube video by a YouTuber named um, Ashlyn Kaylee, and she did a book swap with her husband for a week. And I proposed this idea to Chris because I thought it'd be like a fun idea because I think we have pretty different like tastes in books and different interests. So I think it'll be fun to like get ourselves out of our book comfort zone and just read what each other read. Yeah, I also <laughs> I haven't done anything like this on this channel. And I thought either. it would be really yeah. fun. I'm a little nervous. Yes. Okay. Because I don't want to... So... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to, like, talking with someone else. Here. But uh, neither of us have seen the books that we've picked out for each other. Um, so it's kind of like a little surprise. And we've been planning this for, like, honestly, a month now, I think. And now we're finally getting around to filming it. But, yeah, do you want to go first or do you want... Yeah, sure. I'll do the first book for it. We could do one book. Each. Okay, yeah, one. Okay. okay, okay. So I hid them in the couch. Um, so the first book is a book that I read last month that was very unexpected in terms of the plot, and I kind of just want Benji to read it so that we can talk about it because I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I did like it, but it's very strange. Okay, my eyes are closed. Can I open them? Oh, I didn't pull it out yet. Oh. <laughs> okay, I have it. It is oh. The Ocean at the End of the Lane. <laughs> Benji actually bought yeah. this book first and he didn't read it i read it yeah i read like the first 10 pages and i thought it was going to be like really ex existential um about childhood and growing up and stuff so i kind of stopped and i gave it to chris instead <laughs> yeah i read this in in one day and it made me feel yeah strange so i don't want to have to go through that strange feeling by myself so i'm making a bunch of it yeah i'm excited to read it i really wanted to read it and then I just didn't because I was like I don't know if I'm in the right place for this but I feel fine now so I think I can read it <laughs> no I think you'll be fine with it it's okay not, yeah my book for Chris um wait should I explain it first okay yeah I'll explain okay. it and I'll then keep my eyes closed. okay so um I've been like trying to get Chris to read fantasy stuff like the fantasy stuff that I like I like more high fantasy um I like a lot of series and things like that, and I've tried to get him to read Mistborn, which is a Brandon Sanderson book, and I love Brandon Sanderson as an author. I think he's great. Um, and so I have this book that is much shorter, and it's a more <laughs> condensed story, I and I think Chris will like it. Yes. Okay. It's The oh, okay. Emperor's Soul. Okay. I just finished reading this recently, actually. Um, I will say... Well, mm. It's not like my favorite, favorite book from Brandon Sanderson, but I think his other books can be kind of intimidating because they're very long and they're series. So I just want Chris to kind of experience something from the Cosmere universe. Okay. That's his universe. All right. Yeah, no, I think um, weird. <laughs> okay. But yeah, The Emperor's Soul. I'm excited for you to read it. Okay. Definitely. And then if you like that one, then I'll give you another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've tried Brandon Sanderson before and his... It's not that I didn't like it. It's just he has so much world building and so much that's what i love he has like his own languages and like words yeah. and lore it's just I it's like very it. expansive and so i like it because it's different from typical fantasy where it's like there's fire magic and like water magic and stuff he creates like yeah. his own magic system. i sound like a fanboy but it's true though it's true it's very it's, yeah. creative and like unique so Okay. Yeah, I'm excited oh. for you to read this. This one has a cool magic system, too. I had a feeling you'd give me a Brandon right. Sanderson book. I don't know if they can see it. I had a feeling <laughs> that I'd be getting a Brandon Sanderson book yeah. from Benji. Yeah. Okay. He was, like, the reason why I got into reading as an adult. Because um, I read Mistborn first, and then I just read everything from there. But, yeah, I hope you like it. Okay, we'll see. Oh, and also, we're going to be, like, documenting our reading journey through these books, like, in a vlog style. So... We'll get our live reactions and, and updates. Yeah, it'll be spoilers. Yeah, 
spoilers. Yeah, spoiler. So <laughs> we'll be talking about the plot as we go. So if you don't want to know things that happen, maybe don't watch. We'll still watch the video, but maybe just put it on mute. So you can watch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're doing two books. Yeah. By the way. Okay, so the second book is one that I've already talked about on this channel that I really liked. And it's fantasy and Benji likes fantasy. So fingers crossed that he likes it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm just gonna show it. Okay. It is Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Benji actually was going to read this while I was gone in Florida, um, but he didn't. And I saw it on the table and I was like, what, what are you? Cause I had already yeah, planned to give this a, to you. When you I, said that, when you're like, oh, are you reading that? I was like, oh, you're gonna give that to me. <laughs> but I've been like wanting to read it. It's just that when Chris read it, originally he kind of told me little bits of the plot and stuff um although honestly i have a pretty bad memory so i can't really remember <laughs> what he was saying it's just like this guy goes into this place and he doesn't know where he is or something and then there's a twist right that's yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> okay. a good outline so yeah i really i think this is a good standalone fantasy book that i really enjoyed i already talked about it on the channel if you want to watch that video but um I want to know Benji's thoughts, so I, I had think to get like it. Yeah, I've I think... heard a lot about this. Okay, your next book. Okay. Um, I read this a while ago, a couple months ago, and um, yeah, I really like this book. This is one. Of... Hey, close Should I close my? Okay, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. We're doing that. <laughs> well, I don't know either. But like you said, this is like one of the first non-fantasy books. I feel like Chris really knows what I'm going to say. This is one of the first non-fantasy books that I've read since I started reading again. And at first I was super hesitant to read it, but then like after getting through a couple of pages, I started getting very interested in the story um, and the world building, even though it's like not fantasy, I feel like the author created a very realistic environment. Um, so. Also, I don't know if Chris wants to read this, honestly, so if he doesn't want to read it, I have a few more options. But um, yeah, it <laughs> is the secret history, oh, okay. Okay? And okay? Is it too long, do you think? No, no, I can do okay. this one. Yeah, Chris reads a lot faster than I do. Um, I feel like I read a little bit slower, which is, I think is why he gave me shorter books. <laughs> <laughs> I have given this a shot before I got maybe like 40 pages in and stopped. And you said you liked it. I too. did like it. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I stopped. Sometimes I just stop. Well, we were traveling. Remember we went to Oregon and that's when okay. we were reading it in the, on the plane. Yeah. Okay. That's true. So we were on a trip and so I stopped reading it, but yeah, no, I'll read this. It's just, okay. this is all over TikTok, all over the dark academia, girlies, aesthetic pages, everything. So I feel like it's my duty to read this. Yes, I don't, I haven't. I think so too. Yeah, I don't know. I should have gotten around to this before, but I haven't, so. I liked it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. That's why I, I was enjoying it too, so. I don't see the other ones I got for you, but like, just the options. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. Okay, well, I didn't even read these yet. I just got them recently. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a deadly education and this is how you lose the time war. So. That's against the rules, I feel, because you I haven't read, read it yet. Yeah. Well, I don't know, because the only other books that I've read that I like or like long series fantasy, mm -hmm. so I just, true. I didn't know if you wanted to read this, so I just had this as a backup option, but yeah. Okay, which one are you more excited to read? Um, wait, oh, what's over here? I think probably The Secret History. There's just so <laughs> much hype surrounding it, so I have high expectations, even though I kind of already know what happens because Benji has told me. Yeah, and the entire like, plot. I, so. <laughs> it's because he said um, he said he's not gonna read it, so I was like, can, can I spoil it for you? But honestly, I don't think I explained it very well. That's that's so, true. <laughs> so I think it doesn't matter for me. I'm most excited, I think, to read Piranesi because Chris told me he didn't really like the ocean at the end of the way. It just made me feel so weird. Um, okay, and kind of existential. So well, not soup. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you guys know. Okay. Okay, we'll see how long it'll take me to read this. Probably not that long. No, I believe in The you. margins are big. <laughs> we okay. can do it. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Hey guys, it's Editing Chris here. I wanted to just let you know that the vlogging clips we recorded didn't really turn out that well. So I'm actually going to skip straight to Benji and I just fully discussing the book 
Uh, just a heads up, there will be spoilers. So let's get right to it. Hello, guys. Welcome back. Uh, good to see you. We finished reading. It's been two books. It's been a long time. I'm not going to say how long mm -hmm. it's been. Well, we finished reading a while ago now. Yeah. Um, but we just never got around to filming this part. Yeah, of we've the been video. we've been busy. Um, but we're here now, and I want to talk about the books that we swapped. I think something that I've realized talking with Benji just a little bit about the books that we've swapped was that Benji gave me books that he knew I would like and I gave Benji <laughs> books that I just wanted to see what his reaction would be. Yeah. Well, I do like the books. Like, I'm happy I read them. For the most part, yeah. For the most part. <laughs> but, so, um, yeah, let's... You want to start with the first book? Okay, should we start? Do you want to start or do you want me to start? You can start with... The first book you read that I gave. Okay. Um, so my options were between Piranesi and The Ocean at the End of the Lane, and I decided to go with Piranesi first because this one seemed the most interesting to me because of the concept. Um, so I'm going to give like a short summary of what happened in this book. So our main character, Piranesi, we are kind of thrown in the story, and we find that he's in this labyrinth that he calls the house and it's filled with a bunch of different rooms it's like an endless labyrinth of different rooms and he is stuck in there with one other person named the other um and later we find out that the other has piranesi trapped inside of the house so that way piranesi can find this hidden power that um the other is the, that the other believes is hidden in the house and Piranesi isn't aware that the other kind of like captured him. And while Piranesi's in the house, he loses his memory. So he doesn't really know who he is. He also loses his memories that he has while he's in the house. So he doesn't even remember some of the stuff that happened um, like just a few months ago and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the other tells Piranesi, if you see anyone else inside of the house, avoid them. They're dangerous. Um, but Piranesi, he's very curious and... Um, he's kind of innocent and naive, and I think that's because he, like, lost all of his memories. Um, and he seeks out these people that the other tells him to avoid, and then that's when he finds out that he was captured. And then Piranesi and the other person that he finds in the labyrinth, they escape the labyrinth, and then also the other ends up dying because he gets, like, hit by a wave. And also mm -hmm. the halls randomly, like fill in with water well not randomly because i think piranesi logged them in the book mm -hmm. but yeah that's just like it's a very magical book um and my favorite part of it was the character development of piranesi just the way that he's like very naive and he's trusting of the other even though for me red flags went off like immediately um because the mm -hmm. other would like bring him stuff from the outside world and he's like piranesi you don't have any shoes. Why don't you tell me? I could get them for you. But then I was like, where do you get shoes from? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, he was up to something the whole time. Um, and well, one of my favorite parts, I guess my favorite part of the book is the character development and how um, even after Piranesi gets saved, the person who saves him, who's a policewoman, she's like, your family is looking for you. And uh, they want you back. And Piranesi's like, um, actually, like, I don't know them. That's not... I forgot his real name, but he's like, that was my, that's not me. That's not my life. So yeah, like um, tell them I'm, I'm safe, yeah. but tell that's them not I'm me. Fine. <laughs> like tell them that the, my person in the past is still inside of me and that like, I'll um, keep him safe or something yeah, like that. And that yeah. he's okay. And how he just thinks that's an acceptable answer. You know, mm -hmm. he's just like, yeah, it's like, I'm gonna stay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I really liked that analysis of, um, like who you are without your memories and mm -hmm. without your experiences. Um, and yeah, so I did like it, Yeah, but it wasn't, there's this aspect of kind of like a cult. Yeah. Benji doesn't really like cult, <laughs> cult related I like things. I didn't think it was too culty, but I see what you yeah, mean. Because, well, like the second half of the book is when we realized that the other was part of like this cult or yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was like a, well, he was um, um, a disciple. Is that the right word? A student or something? Yeah, I think it didn't like... I didn't think it would be too... I guess... Too well, much. it didn't go in the direction I think I was hoping for it to go into. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Also, 
Um, just a heads up, we're both recovering from the flu, so if we're sniffling, that's why. But I think my what I liked about the book was that I liked figuring out what was going on because you're thrown into it without any idea of like where he is or what's going on. And I don't mm-hmm. think Benji likes that as much. Yeah, honestly, I don't mind like a little bit of that setup where... Um, it's a lot of like show don't tell I do mm-hmm. kind of like that a little bit but I feel like the book was a little bit heavy on it in the beginning because it's, it's it starts with this weird journal entry where the there aren't typical dates it's like the, it's like the first day, day of the, the albatross, albatross came, came to the yeah, yeah so <laughs> and he also like will capitalize na- normal nouns mm-hmm. and he very much when we were talking about this you said something that I thought was really good where Benji said that um, the house kind of acts as like a character or you said you said something like that when we were talking about it like yeah how dynamic the house is mm-hmm. and I don't know if because it's like another living thing in the story because there aren't yeah. very many like living the, things yeah. that he that Piranesi interacts with so mm-hmm. the house is like always changing and he gives so much reverence to the house and he respects it so much mm-hmm. which is why I didn't think that much into it, but I think that's why certain things in the house are capitalized because like when you capitalize a noun, it holds some importance to you. So that's mm-hmm. what I'm thinking. Um, and yeah, I also like, for me, it's a little bit difficult to get into books. I need to establish like what the setting looks like, what the people look like, what is going on in the story for me to start reading in a way that is like, I forget that I'm even reading and that yeah. I'm just like imagining the story and play out in my head. And so Piranesi was a little bit difficult for me to like get into that. I always have that slump in the beginning with books, but for Piranesi, I was a little bit more difficult for me to get into Yeah, it. I could see that for you, especially because there's not much to go off of. Like, you know a little bit about the house and kind of what goes on, but you don't really have a full sense of everything until much later. And I can see that being kind of a, yeah. something that you're like not really too into but i mainly just wanted to know what he would think so that's why i gave that one and also why i gave the second one but yeah but i do see why people love this book like i know a lot of people love it and i get it i think it just wasn't my favorite that's fair yeah cool okay so i will talk about uh, the first book that i read these were the two that benji gave me the secret history and the emperor's soul and i read the emperor's soul first because it's small (laughs) and it's by brandon sanderson if you don't know brandon sanderson he's like this fantasy book monarch yeah people the stands are the stands are standing super popular sanderson um i have like almost almost all of his books yeah it does on the bookshelf and i've read almost all of them yeah (laughs) benji's been trying to get me to read a brandon sanderson book and i read maybe like one fourth of mistborn uh, the mistborn series and i stopped um not because i didn't like it but because it was so sprawling and he has such like a deep sense of his world and like the magic system was kind of complex and i just felt a little bit overwhelmed so i was excited to read this because it's a self-contained novel in the general universe of cosmere the cause the cosmere (laughs) of brandon sanderson and it's a standalone so i was excited to just kind of like get a sense of his writing without needing to commit to a gigantic intense fantasy book um so the plot of this is The main character, her name is Shy, and she starts off in prison, and we learn that she is this thing called a forger, which are these people who essentially use these things called soul stamps to stamp an item that will transform it visually into something else. So, like, she could stamp a broken old ugly chair and make it this, like, beautiful ornate type chair. Um, Mm. And this... One thing about Brandon Sanderson is that he fully flushes out his magic system. So there's a lot that goes into this stamping. He does a good job at explaining it too. Yeah, it is really fascinating where like you need to know the entire history of the item that you're trying to forge into something else. But in this universe, forgery um, or being a forger is considered an abomination. Um, So she's in prison because she tried to stamp and recreate um, a famous painting and swap it with the original. Um, and she gets caught and she's in prison. So instead of being executed, what happens is they, um, the group in power um, comes to Shy in her cell and tells her, we need you 
to do something that's really never been done before, which is reforge the Emperor's soul, because the Emperor was attempted to be assassinated, and he is now rendered like physically unable to move. Essentially, there's no activity going on in the brain. He's just like a lying, almost corpse, and they need her to essentially reanimate him with a soul stamp mm -hmm. um, to be an exact copy of the Emperor so that the yeah. people in and power can you don't, stay like, in power. You don't soul stamp. Um, you don't forge living things. You, you're you supposed to only do it for like inanimate yeah. objects, which is why Shai is like, this is impossible. This is nearly impossible, and they give her a time frame that she needs to do it by because in the universe there's like a mourning period because the Emperor's wife was um, assassinated. Like, she's, she's done for. So there's a mourning period where they don't need to see the Emperor, and if he's not recreated or restamped in time, then they'll know that the Emperor's assassination was um, successful. successful and then they'll be ousted from power and then another group yeah. will come in power. So they need Shai to keep them in power by reforging the Emperor. So she's given a very strict time period to recreate the entire soul of the Emperor, which is an insane ask. Um, and, I don't, well, we're spoiling so I can kind of say I mean, I sold the whole yeah, story. Yeah, you did. So, so she ends up um, kind of doing it by studying extensively the history of the emperor and reforging him into this like essential masterpiece of work of like hours and hours and hours of intense study and recreation. And um, one of the people that was watching over her who looks at forgery as an abomination kind of at the end sees this incredible recreation of the emperor and starts to think well, maybe there is some art to this mm -hmm. yeah because before beauty. he would see her stamp things and forge things and he would be like this is kind of amazing but you're wasting your artistic yeah, talent on exactly. like doing this this thing that they yeah. view as an abomination yeah like why not pursue actual art rather than forging art essentially but um by the end, he's like, whoa, this is a, an entire beautiful emperor with all his intricacies and the ability to grow and learn. And and maybe there's more to forgery than that. And she also mm -hmm. escapes the prison at the end. Yeah, it's cool. She can also, well, she can create oh. temp. Oh, I forgot. Yes, okay, yes. so creating like a long-term stamp is really difficult or long-term forgery is really difficult. On a she, person. Yeah, on yeah. a person. But she can do like temporary ones on herself. Yeah, to um, give her, like, combat abilities mm -hmm. or to make her into... Like, more knowledgeable about yeah. something. Like, maybe she needs to create... I don't know. She needs to get through a lock so she becomes, like, a master locksmith. Yeah, she's like a, a thief-type amount of time. Like, yeah. stamp. So she ends up um, to escape, like, uses different stamps where she'll, like, stamp herself and suddenly have all of the knowledge of, like, a fighter. And she, like, yeah. beats the crap out of everybody. Yeah, it was a cool... Um, final scene because yeah. the final scene during her escape is when she's like she stamps herself with um uh, fighting abilities and she like beats she, like, she beats, beats everyone up it's up insane and, i love how he does fight scenes too i feel like mm -hmm. i can understand them yeah, yeah so i really did like this book i think it was a great intro into brandon sanderson without being too overwhelming um and it's really quick in the amount of world building that he does in this tiny I guess it's not tiny. How many pages? Are there? Like, oh, like 200 pages. Um, yeah, but the text is actually kind of big. Let's see. Yeah, the amount of <laughs> like world building that he can do in this is really impressive. So, thank you, Benji. I don't know if I'll be reading more Brandon Sanderson. He probably won't. Probably yes. won't. But it Miss was... Born is so good. I think I might re read it eventually. Okay. So yeah, of course. So my turn. Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. okay. So my next book that I read was The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Um, so I was the one who actually picked up this book first. Yeah. I went to the bookstore and I was like, oh, this looks cool. And I liked the synopsis on the back. Um, and I didn't expect it to take the turn that it did because in the first like 10 pages, mm -hmm. very early on, it just seemed like a sad, kind of depressing story about the lack of magic in adulthood compared to childhood and i was actually kind of like i'm ready for the story because i wanted to be sad for some reason yeah. like during the fall winter time um and but so it gets it gets a lot different so it starts off with the main character going to 
I think it's a funeral in his hometown. Um, and then afterwards he goes to this house that's the ocean at the end of the lane house. Um, and then from there he starts recounting his childhood. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's about seven or something. I think that's where the story really begins is when he's a child at like seven years old. Um, and I thought we would like go back to his adult life, but we never did. Mm-hmm. And I also like, I knew that I didn't really think about Neil Gaiman and how, you know, he wrote Coraline and how strange and fantastical the world of Coraline is. Like I didn't really think about that going into this. And this book also kind of feels weird like Coraline. Yeah, I, I gave this to Benji because when I finished it, it made me feel very, very weird. And I just yeah. wanted someone to feel weird yeah. with. Well, essentially, the story <laughs> is like this tragic life of this seven-year-old boy. Um, no one shows up to his birthday party, which I can relate to because that happened to me once when I moved to a new school. His cat gets killed, and then someone gets him a new cat, and the new cat's horrible, and then the person who got him the cat ended up committing suicide (laughs) in the family car and then this like magical demon thing (laughs) appears as his nanny um and then just like wreaks havoc on him and has an affair with his father which he witnesses but it was kind of interesting like because the main character is seven years old when he witnesses um them having the affair he doesn't really understand what's happening and i was like oh you know, this is like a good perspective from a seven, seven-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. Um, and while this is happening, like the ocean at the end of the lane, at the end of his block, in this like farmhouse, is this girl he becomes friends with, and their family. We start to realize has like magical powers. Yeah. It doesn't really explain super yeah. well, but um, the ocean is like this little lake in their backyard that mm-hmm. um, they would. Yeah, the ocean. world like it. As I was reading, I wanted to know more about the world, and it didn't really fully make sense to me. Yeah, um, they like they like drew yeah, like little world building yeah. things that makes you think, oh, there's so much, there's so many more layers to it. But he never really builds upon it. It's kind of like a contained world, but you know that there's like way more going on because mm-hmm. um, you're like, is this child? What's her name again? I forget. What is, like. Nessie? Nettie or something like that. I don't, rem- Wait, I don't remember. I'm really bad at names. But the the girl and her family that live in the house at the end of the lane, like the magic that's kind of like shown at us is Letty. very much it's Letty. Letty. Yeah. Letty. It's very much like slipped in and it's not really explained and you mm-hmm. can tell that. Yeah, like he has a magical worm coming out of his foot and then <laughs> it's a portal to like didn't he become a portal to the other Some, dimension yeah. or something? Yeah, it's like very strange just like how Coraline is very strange Mm -hmm. um so I went into this book not like fully not expecting that at all I thought it would just be like a very realistic fiction story but that's totally (laughs) my bad because no I thought so too yeah because that's how it builds up like the first few pages really just feels like oh this is a sad story and that's how (laughs) yeah the back of the book portrays it that way too so it takes when it takes a magical turn it's very very um a intense yeah turn. and i was just waiting for it to go back but it never went back and then i was like okay this is the story and i was curious to know what other people thought of this story so i looked it up and apparently neil gaiman never intended for this book to be published he wrote it for his wife um, oh yeah i didn't know that yeah interesting if you wrote me this book i'd be like oh <laughs> this is crazy yeah. <laughs> i don't know i wonder what his reasoning was for writing this kind of story for his wife but i thought that was interesting because um not that it felt incomplete it just kind of felt like i don't know jarring almost yeah, and like then a jarring story at the end um since at the beginning he was going to that funeral and decides to visit his childhood home at the end after we recount his entire childhood and he's going back to the home um, as an adult he talks to the mom of the daughter um and she's like yeah, we know you stop by all the time or whenever you're in town, you come to see us, but he keeps forgetting it. I think mm-hmm. they make him forget. Yeah, they like powers to they, make him forget. Yeah, or, or something. something like that. So this isn't the first time that he has visited them as an adult. Yeah, it's almost like he's just drawn to the house. Because when he was... Didn't he, 
he like go there not really intentionally or something in the beginning like i think he went to go see his childhood home and then was like somehow drawn to yeah and he couldn't quite remember why yeah also sorry if i get some of the plot points wrong <laughs> i like i'm it's not been, fully remembering no, yeah, the no. details details um but yeah overall like i thought it was a very interesting plot <laughs> Our neighbors outside. Yeah. yeah, overall, I thought it was a very interesting plot and world, but I didn't mm. love the book. Like, I wouldn't necessarily give this to someone and be like, you need to read this, or you should really read this. I would, just because I, I want to share my, how odd it made me feel. Yeah, or, well, my, like, really good friend from high school, her mom read this, and then she also said it made her feel super weird. Some um, people love it though. Like I was reading reviews on Goodreads, and some mm -hmm. people are like, "This is phenomenal," and I don't, I don't disagree. I just think, I think you just have to have like a certain taste in books yeah. to really like this one. Yeah, I, I agree. Think. I think it's a little bit um, not divisive, but a little bit of an acquired, or I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then the last book from the book swap. I think it was coming back. Come here, baby. Do you want to come up? Come here. Let me be in my life to see. Okay. Hello. Oh, <laughs> so handsome. This is Theo, if you guys don't know. I don't know if I've shown him. They must know Theo. Look at him. So chihuahua. <laughs> Say hello. Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so the last book is the one and only... The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This book, if you haven't heard of it, then you must be living under a rock or I don't know what you're doing, but this is super popular, especially on TikTok uh, with the Dark Academia girlies. Yeah, they um, say that this book like started the this, Dark Academia trend. I think this definitely popularized Dark Academia in recent times. And I can see why. I had been meaning to read this and Benji, when he read, he, when he, and when Benji read this book, he nonstop talked about it for like a month. Yeah, and then I, was, I had it like in my bag at all times. I brought it with me to a buffet <laughs> and I was reading it like on the car ride to the buffet. And like after I finished eating, I was reading it. It gave him the biggest book hangover that mm -hmm. I've ever seen. So um, I was <laughs> excited to read this. Um, the plot is OK. How do I even? I do want to say something. This I thought this was like a recent publication, a recent book, but it was written like wait, let me see. What, like the eighties? Where do you find that again? Here. Oh, here, yeah. Copyright 1992. Yeah, it was written in 1992, and this book feels really modern because it does yeah. feel modern. Um, but the plot is the main character. His name's Richard, and he's from a boring Sacramento town um, with like a fairly boring family, and he. I'll just kind of speed up the plot a little bit, but he essentially moves to uh, Vermont to go to this small liberal arts college where he ends up studying Greek. Initially, when he goes to the college, he's not studying Greek because at this college, like the Greek program, there's only five students or four, five. five. There's only five students and they all take classes with the same professor and they all walk together on campus with these cool outfits and they don't talk to anyone else. In there. And they're so like clicky and, and he's fascinated with these students and he studied Greek a little bit prior to going to the college. So he's like, oh, I wanna study Greek. And then his fascination with these students builds and how they only take classes with this mm -hmm. one professor. And so he ends up somehow getting into the Greek program, which is super exclusive. And so now he's taking classes with only five other students and enters their close-knit mm -hmm. group. Yeah, and he puts them on a pedestal, I think, because of his kind of like boring Poor, background. yeah, he's yeah. he's from a poor family and they're all rich. Yeah, he also kind of lies about being poor, I he think. He does, yeah. he wants to be, you know, accepted and cool with his new group. Yeah, and so um, essentially the book, when I think of this book, I think of like tobacco and I think of like hard liquor and drugs and dusty books and Greek letters and like yeah. all this kind of thing. So, <laughs> so a lot of this book is the interpersonal relationships between the six of the Greek students. And the main conflict in the story is 
um, the students in one of their Greek classes with their eccentric professor are they're talking about this Dionysian form of like ecstasy and release and wild kind of I don't spiritual know. I, don't know. I don't know how to explain it but they're they're talking about this sort of like crazed Dionysian state that the Greeks would go into and so the group of students try to recreate it for like months and months and months and then eventually um, they do and they end up accidentally killing a farmer in their crazed state and one of the people in the group his name is bunny who wasn't there um, finds out that they did it and he starts kind of taunting them about it or like bringing it up around other people didn't he not know for sure if they did it he he How did at he? first he didn't really quite know for sure but then he he finds out for sure that they did it by finding uh, finding like some, proof. Yeah, I remember before he just didn't really know when he was like sort of messing around. Like, were yeah. you guys like there where the farmer yeah. died, and weren't yeah. you doing this? And he was kind of salty because they started excluding him from their uh, ritual attempts just because yeah. he is so kind of annoying and a little bit uh, blabbermouthy. So he ends up finding out that they actually did do it, and then since he talks to everyone and blabs his mouth and his pretty annoying they end up killing him <laughs> well it's not just because he's like annoying it was because he would have potentially revealed no, yeah. that they killed him and they yeah. were like worried about their own safety they yeah were exactly <laughs> and so that's kind of the main thing in the book is that they kill one of their greek classmates and then everything unravels from their their relationships lots of drinking lots of cigarettes and paranoia and mm-hmm it's a and, mess. Yeah, because Bunny... So they actually... The story starts off with saying that Bunny is dead. Yeah, and so, so you, we know he yeah, dies. You're like aware that Bunny is going to die sometime in the book, and it builds up to that. Um, and then Bunny dies maybe like halfway or like three-fourths mm -hmm. of the way right. into the book. Yeah. yeah, so then the rest of the book is like the police search, the investigation, what happens, like in between or with the characters relationships they all kind of go crazy in general how it ends is they all end up pretty unhappy i'll just say that <laughs> um not that i'm not trying to spoil but just because to explain what happens you need to explain yeah. so much so i'll just say that it ends very bleak um every character has a pretty sad ending and well, it just made me feel very strange i don't know not like yeah you finish it and you're like my i mean every almost every character in the story is kind of horrible um but it does feel like you kind of lost friends because the story's over i i guess so i i could see that just because you're spending so much time and i think the book focuses so much on the relationships between them that mm -hmm. you really do become a part of their group no matter how horrible they are i have like a fondness towards the characters i don't know like i don't like them as people but i enjoyed their characters and if you for whatever reason haven't read the book but you're watching these spoilers. I just want to say, like, check maybe the trigger warnings because there's a lot of, a lot of messed up things. So yeah, I really, that said, I really liked it. <laughs> um, I really did like it. Um, it took me a bit to read just because it feels so dense with stuff, like not mm -hmm. just text-wise, but with just things. Like, it just feels very yeah. intense. And I tried to find something similar to this book. So people said to read. Um, if we were villains, and I didn't really like that at all. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get very far, but I didn't enjoy it. And you read Stoner, too? Oh, I didn't finish Stoner, though. Oh. But it does give similar vibes, except it's not as... Um, I don't know, it's not as interesting, I guess. Mm. But it, Stoner does give a similar um, feeling to, to The Secret History. So what did we learn? <laughs> what did we learn? Um... That it takes us really a really long time to film to film it video. together. <laughs> if it's not just like film and then yeah, okay, it's be yeah. over. Um, what did we learn? I think I learned that your taste. Well, I think I just got a better sense of your taste. And it my my like taste in books, I feel like has really been developing because before I'd only read fantasy, and mm -hmm. then I got kind of fantasied out. I was like, this, everyone is saving the world. Like, too yeah, much you branched, magic. you've been branching out. Yeah, so That's I, good. after getting burned out on fantasy, I wanted to read like slower, more, I guess, like boring books that aren't as plot heavy. <laughs> the and, boring in question. <laughs> well, it's just, there's no like monsters. Yeah, you know, yeah. 
terraforming the world or something. But there are monsters in it. The monsters inside. <laughs> inside. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, so that's one of the reasons why I picked up this book was because I was like, I'm tired of fantasy, and then, and then it's then there's fantasy. It's fantasy. So, um, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. So I don't think we'll be swapping books again. Well, maybe we will. <laughs> maybe in the future it could be fun. If you liked this video, let us know if we should swap books again. Okay, I'll make sure to give. Well, maybe I'll give even worse recommendations what? next time. <laughs> <laughs> Just, well. No, I think that this was actually good for me to, like, broaden my book horizons. Because I was, honestly, I was never going to read this. Um, That's true. So I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I am happy that I did read it. Okay. Because even, like, reading books you don't like, it gives you an idea of what you don't like and also why you don't really like it. And I always think it's good to do things mm -hmm. that, even if you end up not liking it, because it's a good learning I opportunity. Agree. So thank you for watching. Um... I have two video ideas coming up. Um, we'll see how those pan out. But thank you for watching and thank you to Benji for joining me. And um, I will see you guys <laughs> in the next video. Hopefully sometime soon. Maybe not months and months and months. No, it'll be sooner than that. Okay. He's on his YouTube grind oh, now. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> I will see you guys later. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.